That's a big discussion, right? And we're looking back, we're almost you know, halfway through the year, so people are looking back at earnings at year to date and uh, assessing uh, how much of the leadership has come from the tech sector. And the answer is a lot, if not all of it. If you take out the tech sector from S&P, actually S&P would be down year to date. So almost all 99% of the performance of the S&P has been driven by tech. And if you want to whittle it down further, I, I got this from uh, the guest host on Squawkbox. I thought it was a really interesting stat. Two thirds of the S&P earnings have been driven by just three companies, Apple, Amazon, and Microsoft. So there you have it. So a lot of leadership is contained in a very uh, a small, narrow part of the market. So then the question becomes is one, is this likely to continue? Are we going to see this performance in the latter half of the year? And two, it, will the leadership uh, spread out? Will it become less narrow and move to a more broad-based structure? And I think on the first point, almost everyone who will come to these shows will tell you the same thing. Valuations are very high. But can the valuations be justified? And the answer to that is probably yes for the most part, for a lot of these companies, because they're still bringing in the money, they're still bringing in the revenues. Again, another statistic for you, Willem, I like my stats. Um, twice of the, uh, well, the, the growth, the revenue growth exhibited by the tech companies is twice as fast as the normal, uh, as the rest of the companies within the S&P as well. So the growth is still there, the revenue growth is still there. They're still drawing huge amounts of money billions worth of revenue. And if you just look at uh, Amazon yesterday, one day, Amazon Prime, uh, they sold 100 million products and they're estimated to have made $3.6 billion worth of sales just in one day, right? So the numbers are still there. Um, and I think that's a very important point. But the second thing is you, and, and you know, at these conferences delivering alpha, people are very vocal on this one, you also have to think about where you want to get exposure to. You can't just uh, take a sweet broad brush and get exposure to the NASDAQ index. You actually want to drill down deeper into these individual companies and see where the future is. And the future is heading towards cloud, it's heading towards artificial intelligence, digital payments. And there's been a bit of an outperformance between, say, the software companies and traditional hardware companies like uh, Intel, Samsung, which have actually underperformed relative to those forward-looking technologies. So, so what, what are the stumbling blocks for this sector? I mean, we had this 4.34 billion euro fine being leveled yeah. against Google by the yeah. European Commission yesterday. Mm. Is regulation a challenge that they're all going to face? I think. Again, that's the big question. You know, that's the million dollar question that people are asking. The uh, trillion dollar question. Well, trillion dollar question <laughs> uh, for the tech sector. But look, let, take Google yesterday, a uh, five, billion, $5 billion fine. Uh, the share price barely budged. It was flat on the day. And that's because Google are sitting on hundred, hundred billion dollars worth of cash. And the debate I was having with pocket Steve earlier, well, it's pocket change <laughs> for them. You know, it is a drop in the ocean. But the question is whether or not this is going to severely impact their business model going uh, going forwards. Will they be forced to break up some of the businesses? Will they be uh, forced to allow other entrants to go into the market? And then again, the question is, well, what other company has the scale of Google to enter into the market in the first place? It's probably going to be another big company, like a Samsung, right? Um, and so I think the bigger point is that these mega companies are so big in scale and in breadth, that's very, going to be very difficult for the regulators to start tarnishing their revenues. They're captive, they're captive markets. And as you You've say, got more than a billion for users, two billion users on Facebook, right. one billion users on Instagram. You've got, uh, what, 500 million on Twitter or something like that. These are huge, vast numbers of people. And I think the question for the likes of Instagram and Twitter is how they monetize that, given that they have such a big breadth of audience. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.